my name is Zach. For those of you that don't know me, I have the privilege of being the worship pastor here. Um, so if you want to start coming and uh, finding a seat, we are going to stand up together, um, and I'm going to pray, and then we are going to worship uh, our great and glorious God. And God, we love you so much. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being faithful to us. Um, in the time of newness in the new year, um, thank you for being consistent and constant. Uh, thank you so much that your love is for us, uh, that you are for us and you want good things for us. Uh, we worship you and we praise your name. Um, and I pray that uh, you would just help remove like any obstacles that are uh, getting in the way of us experiencing your heart this morning. Uh, help us to experience you fully. In Jesus' name, amen.
one, it's furious. Love is sweet, your love is wild. It's waking hearts to life. Your love is deep, your love is wide, it covers us.
In your name, amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning and Happy New Year! We're excited to see you. We were so excited to kick the New Year off with you last week, but we love you so much that we didn't want you to tune into human popsicles on the side of the road somewhere, right? So we uh, went ahead and canceled church. It's a funny thing about that. When you call a news agency and you say, hey, I need to cancel a church service, they're like, well, how do we know you're with that church? I was like, really? People try to cancel other people's churches? We had to set up all these accounts, we didn't get on the news, I'm sorry for that. Next time we cancel a service, it'll be on the news. But it's got me thinking about how I can cancel somebody else's church now. And once you know there's rules, you just want to break them, right? So Happy New Year, we're excited about 2018. Um, January 8th, 2017, a new church was born, right? Happy birthday. Been with you guys for a full year. Next week we're gonna have cake. Next week, you know, when my kids have a party in the middle of the week, we're like, yeah, today's your birthday, but we'll, we'll celebrate on Saturday. So that tomorrow's your birthday, but we're gonna celebrate next week, right? So we're gonna have cake and balloons, and we're gonna tell some stories. And we hope you guys um, will be thinking and praying about what the Lord's been doing in your life this week. And and we might, I haven't asked Zach this yet, we might have an open mic sharing time of just the, what the Lord has done in your life over the past year as part of this church. We'd love you to share that with us. Can we do that, Zach? Yeah. Okay. Right. Go team. So it's a new year. We're excited about all the new things. Um, as I've been praying about 2018, the Lord has just been pushing on my heart. Hey, family. You guys are a church family. And, and you started a program. You started a gathering. You've been faithful. You've gone through a lot. But in 2018, I'm asking myself, and I'd like to encourage you to ask yourself, what does it mean to be a part of a faith Family. How do we start to view one another the way the early disciples did as, as family, as people who love one another and care for one another? So we're going to do all kinds of things this year. We're going to do family dinners and study groups and social things. And I just encourage you, throughout the next 12 months, months with me, would you help us just to kind of turn the corner from being a, a program to being a people who view each other as family in any way we can? One of the ways we're doing that is this afternoon we're picking off Rooted. Okay, who's been through Rooted before? There we go, some folks. Uh, we got 10 people signed up, and we're going to have our Rooted kickoff today at 4 o'clock at um, Blue Star Barns, which is Joe and Amy's house. And I think the address is right there on the screen. Um, there's, there's nine people signed up, but there's still room for another four or five people. So if you're interested in doing Rooted, Rooted is a 10-week kind of group experience that connects you to God, your purpose, and the church in a deeper way, we'd love for you to show up at 345 today and sign up and take root with us. We'll also be doing it in the fall, and hopefully this fall we'll be able to provide child care too. So um, Rooted is a great way to lean into community, to lean into faith, family, to learn more about God, your purpose, and your church family. So we hope you can join us for that. Um, we're also excited today to kick off a two-week parenting focus with Dan Seymour, who I think just walked in. Boom. Hi, Dan. Good morning. Dan will be up with us in just a few minutes, um, and he'll talk about parenting with grace and truth for two weeks, and then after he's with us for two weeks, we're going to kick off three weeks of parenting workshops after the service. So if you're in any uh, phase and stage of family development, those parenting workshops um, will be with some of our pastoral staff, as well as professional, um, professionals from the Winning at Home Counseling Center, and we'll be talking about some hot topics of parenting. So there's more information in your program. We'd love for you to RSVP. Join us for those three workshops. There will be child care available for those. So that's going to be really cool. Um, and as we kind of move into the new year, there's these books. Look what they're called. Move. I just said that. We're moving into the new year. Hey, if you want to get involved in our programs, both here in Sagatuck at Third Coast, but all, all over West Michigan, there are other churches too, this is a great way to see the programs that we pre-planned, that we know are coming, and to get involved in faith family. Um, but we also have some organic things happening. We have some member-led things that kind of sprout up here and there. Um, we had a cookie exchange uh, that some of the ladies did before Christmas. That was pretty awesome. Um, we also have a men's retreat coming up this spring. And there's some info in your program. But Steve is in the back with the Third Coast shirt and the lanyard. Hi, Steve. And Steve would love, um, if you're a man and you're interested in going to Grace Adventures for a weekend, they do like paintball ding and skeek shooting, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, Steve's the guy to talk to. He's got some info back there, and he'd love to get you hooked up with that. 
So we're excited to move into a new year. If you're new with us and you want to get involved more in the life of the church, there's this little tear up on your program. It's really slick. It's perforated. Oh, man. Mine came up a little messy. But if you, if you tear that off and throw it in the box in the back, we'll get a hold of you. We'd love to introduce you more to more people in the church, support your family, and get to know you a little bit. So thanks for joining us today. We love you. We're glad you're here at this time. We're going to dismiss kids, fourth grade and under, to go back to Children's Church. Woo! You guys are going to have a blast worshiping back there. And why don't you all just stand up and say hi to somebody real quick. We'll move on in just a few minutes. to you throughout your rooted experience? Yeah, so I grew up in a Baptist church from baby, and um, uh, one thing that I learned was that God wants a relationship with me. I mean, there's so many people, so why, why me? But I learned that he literally wants a relationship with me. Um, that was like the first week that totally struck me to me and I think of like looking at my kids you know no matter how naughty they are no matter how much they drive me crazy sometimes I still love them I still want to pursue them and I still want a relationship with them so I really learned that um, he's a friend he is not this mean rule maker that I should fear but he's a friend that I should but respect so that was one thing that I learned and I learned that there's not a like a hierarchy of Christians, right? So like, I don't have a favorite kid, sometimes. Um, <laughs> depending on the day, I might say that. But, um, but he doesn't either, right? So every, no, every sin is the same. And so just because I have some junk and garbage that I feel holds me back or makes me feel like, oh, I'm not a very good Christian, that's not the case. There's no hierarchy. He loves us all the same. Um, and yeah, he just really wants a relationship with us. That was the biggest thing I learned. That's so good. Thank you, Mary. Um, and John, can you maybe share with us, um, throughout your root experience, um, how did it develop within you maybe a greater sense of purpose in the church and in the local community? Sure. Thanks, Jason. That's a, that's a really easy question for me, because um, after my rooted experience, I became a Christian. I wasn't a Christian before. Um, so that's obviously the biggest way that it impacted me. But um, week to week, Rooted is a, um, really when it comes down to, to what you're, you're doing, it's about a two week time, every uh, two hour, I'm sorry, a week time where you're uh, together with other people and you're working through the same material and you're, you're learning how to uh, share stories about yourself and really how to talk about, about faith and being a Christian. So um, I got much more comfortable as I went through the Rooted experience uh, doing that. And then as a result, obviously, made my public proclamation of faith, but then Rooted really gave me the courage to uh, step out of the balcony at Rich Point and come join a little church down in Saugatuck and get involved and help and help lead. And that's something that I think 
uh, you know, before Rooted and certainly before, uh, you know, years ago, if you would have said, hey, you're going to be getting up at 7 in the morning helping set up chairs and getting involved in leadership, I would have said, you're crazy. It just, it just wasn't there. So um, Rooted really was my introduction to that. Uh, and I think the other thing I just want to say is that we do talk about it being intense and really deep, but it's not scary, though. Uh, you'll get to, uh, right away, um, you'll open up with this group, you'll, you'll get comfortable, and uh, it's really cool for somebody new to faith like me or somebody like my wife who had been uh, in church all her life. So it's a great experience, loved it, and uh, did a lot for me. Awesome, thank you so much, both of you. Um, so, you know, hearing that, if you feel inspired or encouraged to maybe join Rooted, um, we encourage you to do that. Um, if you need more information, you need that address again, just come find me after the service and I'll help get you the proper information. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. In a couple minutes here, we're going to have Dan Seaborn come up, and that's really exciting. I'm super excited about that. Thank you, Dan. Um, and, yeah, so that's all I got. Hopefully I see some of you tonight over here. Thanks. Woo! What a cool environment you've created here, Pastor Aaron. I mean, just, I felt, I felt welcome, even though nobody spoke to me yet, I felt welcome. <laughs> it's a relaxed environment, a cool environment that the Lord can do a great work. And I, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, is Pastor Aaron a little crazy? Is he a little crazy? Yeah. Well, thank you for your leadership. Let's give him a hand, too. For this <laughs> You guys have been through a lot in a year as a church, and I'm just proud of seeing the joy you seem to have just coming into worship, and that's awesome. And so thank you for allowing me to drive down. I'll preach here for a little bit, then fly back to Ridge Point and speak there real quick. Um, I apologize. I've been in bed for three days sick. You can hear my voice is really bad, so I'm kind of sweaty. Don't touch me and stuff like that, but <laughs> just know I'm going to do my best today to honor the Lord. If I say something inappropriate, perfect. I'm on drugs, so it, it just <laughs> let it go. I want to talk a little bit about parenting, and today, after we're done, you're going to receive a little gift, and as part of that, I want to talk about some things the Lord has taught me, showing me about parenting. I don't have it all figured out. And so I come humbly before you today. If you know me or know my family, you, we are not perfect. And it's really interesting. When I started winning at home years ago, I remember saying to the Lord, I would love uh, to wait until my children are grown. Let me just see how it turns out. <laughs> and then I'll you know, maybe go into some kind of family ministry. It was very clear the Lord showed me, I want you to teach from your mistakes. I want you just to go live life and be an average person. And what you go through, share it. And I got lots of stuff. I got lots of stuff. And today you'll see some of that stuff. And as I was preparing for you know, opening this series uh, called Parenting with Grace and Truth, uh, I was just asking the Lord, and there's 10,000 things you can talk about when it comes to parenting. Uh, we, could, we could all sit in here and talk about how we were affected by how our parents raised us. Uh, some of you had great role models. Some of you don't even know your parents. So we're all over the board. Uh, we can talk about where we are right now. Some of you are you very young children. You just dismiss them. Others have adult children like me. I've got three grandchildren now. But I remember all the anxiety that went with having those children. And so we're, we're at all different spots. And so I felt like as I prayed to the Lord, I, I, I just really was seeking, how do I open and share this thought of 
what is really important? What will really matter when it's all done? When it's all done and my life is over, what will matter about me as a parent? What will, what will really count? And that's what I'm going to do in this message today. Next week, you'll be watching me probably by video. And in that video, I'm going to talk a lot of practical stuff. But today is going to be more foundational stuff. And so I went to Ridge Point the, the last night. They have Saturday night service, as you know. Sorry, I'll need to just take some sips today to keep my throat from just burning. Um, and so I went there about an hour and a half early because I had to be there for a personal. And then I sat by myself for about an hour. Just don't feel good, so I'm just resting before I walk up to preach. And as I'm sitting there, um, I just felt like the Lord led me to, here, here's my sermon notes. Just flip the paper over and write this down. So I flipped it over, and this is what I wrote. This is how I'm going to open the message. Now, first of all, I wrote down the age of my children. Uh, I wrote their ages all down, and then I added it up. I have been parenting, because you don't talk about parenting just your old, you know, have, your, my oldest kid's 31. I don't say I've been parenting for 31 years. No stinking way. I get credit for 31, <laughs> 28, 27. I've been parenting 108 years. <laughs> and every doggone one of them counts. Because there are four different children. I say it this way, they all came out of the same home, but you wouldn't know it. I can tell you that. <laughs> I know that's a little edgy, but Aaron, I'm sure it says worse. But I, uh, <laughs> I've been married 108 years, and I would have never dreamed that I would have gone through what I've gone through as a parent. When Jade and I stayed 35 years ago on our wedding day and said, I do, I would have had no clue. No clue what was coming. Uh, if you had told me what I've gone through in the last five years as a parent, I would have said to you, not, not me. I mean, I know people who will. But not what, and it's amazing. And I, I just wrote this down. It started out a little bit like a Dr. Seuss thing, but it doesn't end up there. So just be patient. Um, I could not see that this little bundle would make my life feel like a great big stumble. Yeah, because I had days uh, a couple of years ago where I didn't even want to be in another day. I'm done. I would have never dreamed that man. When I held that little girl, I would have thought, this is going to be rock and roll. Um, I did not know it would be okay, even if things didn't sometimes go my way. So that's the end of the Dr. Seuss. Then I wrote this. <laughs> I have laughed, I have cried. I've been loved, and I've been lied to. I've wanted to be done with it all and drive to a tree. And I've wanted to have even more of these little peckers. <laughs> I'm like you, Mary. I have a favorite child, too. So anyway, only one thing, <laughs> only one thing has been consistent. God has not left me. Uh, he was there at 2.30 in the morning when I didn't know if I even wanted to be there anymore. He was there when I was sitting under a culvert near Ridge Point, watching the water flow by me with leaves going in front of me, wondering if my own leaf would ever return. He has never left me. And I will say, standing here today, I want to give this great encouragement to those of you, most of you who have way younger children than me. I love that. I love to get to speak to you. I am today going to take the pressure off you. I look back, I put way too much pressure on myself as a parent. And growing up here in West Michigan, I just got to say it, there is something about this area that you got to, your family's got to look this right, you got to do this right stuff. You gotta, I want to say, I have discovered, here's what I want to say, this is a really good statement for you to hear. I've discovered today with all of our warts, all of our hurts, and I'll share some of them today. We've been through some crazy crap, all right? I am much more of a complete person today than I was 10 years ago. I'm more complete. God has used the screw ups and faults in my family to make me more complete. And I celebrate that. I would not have said that 10 years ago. But I realize today I'm a, I'm a better person for the very trauma that I've been through because he walked with me through it. And if you're here today with some warts or some things and you're kind of like glad Christmas is over because they're gone or, or at least they're back at their house, you're pretty normal. You're not a weirdo. And I want to, uh, you know, like, so the way I would illustrate it would be, can you throw that little picture up? There, there's this little picture here, you know, it, it started out, this is, I'm going to be this, this parent, my child's going to be perfect, and it's going to be, I'm going to sit up, and, and, and the way it more turned out for me is, is this next picture. Um, it, it kind of, 
That's what it feels more like I did. I was shooting for that, but this is reality. And if this is more what you relate to, then I would say, this is life. Uh, this is life. And I want to I wanna tell you today that what I've discovered is that this is okay. That God is really guiding me and leading me to celebrate my complete picture that didn't turn out exactly like I was hoping. And so I want to start with uh, a little bit of myth buster type of thing. There's these myths I think parents buy into. The first one is this. We have this myth that you have to be a perfect parent. And I want to tell you the fact is there is no such thing as a perfect parent. Except God Almighty. He is the perfect parent. We're not. There is no perfect parent on this earth. Uh, my children have reached adult age. And so at Christmas there were several times. Four children, all different personalities. Love them all. They have four different personalities. And they're in their mid to late 20s. When children get mid to late 20s, my oldest is 31. When they get in that age, here's what they do. Because I did it too. They look at the way I parented and go, I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> Why did you do that, Dad? So I got four of them. They don't come as a team. They come individually. Dad, I have a question for you. Why, you know, when you were raised, this, why did you do that? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I did it for this reason. This is why. Well, I probably would have done it that way. That's good. That's cool. You get to do it your way. And as a parent, you sit here and go, well, I don't know. And, and I said to my children, Christmas morning, uh, before we open gifts, <laughs> they pay the price. I give a speech. <laughs> and before we open gifts, I reminded them, that we as a family, I believe, have put on earth with a mission to lead women in home, to call people to Christ. I said, you're a part of that family where that's happened. Um, and so because of that, I need to say a few things to you. Number one, uh, I want you to always love the Lord. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. I want you to always love the Lord. It's what your dad's going to try to do. Always love the Lord. Y'all get to decide what y'all do. I want you to love the Lord. And then second, I want you to notice, Mom and I, I said these three words, Mom and I have not been perfect parents. You guys, now at your age, can see it even more than you've ever seen it before. And, I, and then I say this, but here's what we have done. You guys know a little bit of our childhood and our life. Uh, I grew up in a very tough home, came from a really tough home. And my father was very abusive, and I have never abused anyone in my family. I said, I took what I was handed. I said, I, to my children, sitting there, I, I took what I was handed, and I tried to raise the bar just a little bit. I haven't been perfect. I have failed you. But I've tried to give you what I had, plus a little added to it. So all I'm asking you is my children, look at my flaws, look at my inconsistencies, learn from them, please take that, and now raise the bar a little more. Let my grandchildren grow up in a little better home than you have. That's all you can do. And I said, so as you sit and you analyze and you look at my faults and failures, Know that I tried. Know that I tried to improve on what I was given, and now I ask you to go take what I gave you, as, as bad as it was, and raise that bar. And that's how I left it. I prayed over it. Because I'm not a perfect parent, and I accept that. And when you acknowledge it, it just takes the pressure off. So when your kids say, Dad, you did that the wrong way. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you see that. I'm looking so forward to watching you raise the children. <laughs> it's just, you know, then it takes all the pressure. If you get defensive, they're like, can you not take, the, you know, any kind of criticism? I'm like, sure. So just be willing to realize you're not perfect. Just admit it. As soon as they say it, for sure. Take the pressure off yourself. You're not perfect. You're not going to do it right. You don't need to defend it. You've done the best you can and continue to grow to do the best you can. Second myth that I think we struggle with is I should know how to handle anything that comes up. And the reality is there's going to be stuff that comes up where you have no clue. No stinking clue. Um, as I prepared this message, I thought back to uh, scenarios that happened to me as a parent. I, I, I didn't know I was going to go through that. Uh, some of you have young children, you know, when they're sick. I don't know if you're like me, but when my children were really sick, high fevers, that's hard. And I don't know, should I take them to the doctor, should I not? I remember one night we went in to check uh, our youngest daughter, Tim. 
You aren't going to believe it when I tell you that her tent was 105.7. I wrote it down because I remember I did an article about it later. 105.7. The thermometer came out. I look at my wife. I'm like, I remember 102s and 103s. 100, I mean, she probably is inside. I, mean, I, I don't I'm freaking out. So I call, you know, call 911. I have a child who uh, has 105. Oh, mother, we're kidding her. Okay, immediately douse her in cold water. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you got a kid that's 105.7, already crying, feeling off. A little child, I don't think, go, I got an idea. <laughs> I mean, that's it. You know, in my mind, I'm going, I gave your boy, but she's going to scream even more. I don't know. No clue. I have no clue how to handle that. No clue. It's called parenting life. It's part of it. Uh, I remember um, I, I had a child, I don't know if y'all got, got this, but I had one child who ever, even to this day, he's 28, he always has something in his mouth. He just always had stuff in his mouth. <laughs> Safety pins, uh, anything he could find to drive you crazy, he always had in his mouth. And I remember I came home from a trip and I. Um, walked in the house, and I like to buy my kids like fun surprises sometimes. So I'm talking about things that happen to you as a parent. That it's not like when you have a child, you don't know that day's coming. Because all you have young children, you've got a day coming. You don't know what that day's going to be, but it's coming. And something's going to happen. You're going, really? And I, I was going to the airport, and I was on a trip, and I, I thought I'm going to get my kids a little gift, because I love to sometimes sit them all on the couch for us, line them up, Hold your hands out, eyes closed, and I'd stick them in their hands. And I saw this thing in one of those little kiosks. I thought the coolest in the world was a flashing belly button ring. It, it just was about the size of a dime, and it just flashed all kinds of colors. And I thought, they all love this. So I bought all of one. I bought James one too. But I, I bought all of them <laughs> one. And if you had any, it was perfect. It would just stick in. If you had an Audi, it had a little magnet. It would hook on the back. It was the perfect gift for any of our Audis. I had two and two. So I got home, I gave him the gift, and when I handed it to Josh, the size of a dime flash, and I said, son, can you just not put it in your mouth? Can you please not? Y'all know where it's going. Before dinner, before we went to bed that night, here he comes, Dad. Dad, I, 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 had, I just put it right there, and it fell in, and then, well, where is it, son? I, I swallowed it. Like, was it flashing? He goes, yeah, I had it on. <laughs> I said, so right now in your stomach, there is this thing. He said, do you think it's going to hurt me? I said, I don't. I have no clue. <laughs> so I call the doctor's office. What are you going to say? Hey, dude, um, kind of interesting thing here. Um, we've been eating some different stuff at the house today. My son's eating a belly button drink. I mean, this doesn't even make sense. He passed it, just so you know, it wasn't flat, but it came out. <laughs> I had no idea, um, I had no idea that one night um, during the teen years, my phone is just going, and I look over, it's 2.30 in the morning, and it's uh, my daughter's name on the phone. I'm like, oh, she's, up, oh, she's upstairs to sleep. Her phone, I'm like, hello? It's a guy, Mr. Seaborn. I'm like, yes? Um, can, you do, can you do me a favor? I said, who is this? He told me his name. I said, what, what are you doing with my daughter's phone? He said, well, I, I'm sorry, it's 2.30, you guys get it. And it's like, hello, a guy, what? Who is this? Uh, your daughter was trying to sneak me into your house last night, and she had me locked in the trunk of her car, and she left her phone with me in case you know, she wanted to call me until she could get me. She must be upstairs asleep and she's forgot about me and I can't hardly breathe. <laughs> and I can't get my breath and I just saw your name on her phone. So I thought, is there any chance you could come in the garage and let me out of your car in your garage in the trunk? I'm like, are you serious? I said, if I come to my garage and open my trunk, you're in the trunk of my car and you can't breathe. Correct. Is there any way you just let me out? And Jake's like, who is it? I'm like, you ain't gonna believe it. Man. <laughs> Some dudes in the trunk in the garage and our daughter's trying to sneak in the house. And I don't know who he is. So I go outside, I pop the trunk, boom, there he is. He jumps out, runs into the dark, right out of the garage. Or get, get a dive by the rush. You guys would have read it in the news. Seaborn 
kills another, locked in the trunk. <laughs> That little girl that I had this image of, and she was just turn, turn out the way I want. My wife will even use the word that my dreams were shattered. I said, Mom, y'all got dreams, Mom. And when they don't work out perfectly, it's hard. And I want you to know, as parents, if yours doesn't go absolutely perfect, then you can say you're like us. Because I'm an imperfect parent dealing with imperfect children. And as I prayed and asked the Lord, what's the main thing I could say to you today? He showed me two things. I was riding in my car. I was praying to him about two weeks ago. I went, Lord, there are so many ways I could go with this thing. This, this book on parenting with grace and truth, the book is about this theme. As parents, we will either go one way or the other. Grace and truth, with truth being legalism, that's the law, that's right, that is the Ten Commandments, there they are, that's what the Bible was, the Old Testament, full of do's and don'ts. Jesus came along, and to all of that added grace. Jesus said, yeah, but we're flawed people, and it'll take my grace to overcome them all. Some people won't always follow the Ten Commandments, some of your children won't always follow the Ten Commandments, because y'all didn't either. <laughs> so they're just following your example. And what you as a parent have to learn to do is, how do I balance truth with grace? And this has been the greatest challenge of my life. Because I have to tell my children the truth, but I have to know even when they fail, how will I have grace to help them get back where they need to be? And so I <coughs> ask the Lord, what do I say? What's the thing that I say? And, and it felt really clear to go to his word, to a passage where he taught his children what he expected. And I'm going to do what I call work backward. I do this a lot in my life. I think about when I'm 80, if the Lord gives me that many years, and I look back at myself, and I want to be known for a certain thing. So we're going to do this. As parents, travel to 80. Okay, you're 80 now. Looking back now, you might have a guy with kids and grandkids. There you are. At 80, looking back, what will you wish you will have taught them? Because right now, I know what's going on, and you'll have some classes dealing with this. But I know what's going on. You guys are, how, what, at what age do I let them have one of these? And how often can they be on it? And how much this and how I get it, I get it. But I want you to know at 80, that won't be your big question. At 80, you will want to make sure you've done the two things that God did with his children in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Pretty common passage in parenting. And I just want to read it to you. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, in other words, hear my kids, Jesus, God speaking, not Jesus, God speaking Old Testament to his children. Hear, O children, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments right now that I am giving you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. God said to his children, look, I need y'all to do a couple things for me. And here's why. We get bogged down and caught up in the everyday minutia of life and all the things of parenting. We all do. I do too. I will leave here today and have to deal with a couple of parenting things. It's life. Managing that will be a great challenge for all of us. And in the process of managing it all, I have to remember, stay true to a couple of foundational things. Because when I'm 80, if I did these two things, and I'm about to tell you what they are, there's just two. If I do these two things, I will say I was a successful parent. I will say it because I will base it on what God taught me to do. Number one is this. Make sure, number one, teach your children that God is God. This is it. Teach your children that God is is God. Now in that day, you understand that was a polytheistic society, tons of deities, lots of gods. Our tends to be tends to be more of a monotheistic. We're seeing more and more gods arise in our you know, Western culture here. But in general, the Eastern culture is way more polytheistic, we're more monotheistic, meaning one God. 
But even in the middle of our one God culture, you guys all know other gods are people. And our job as parents is to make sure our children know, hey, hey, I just want you to know, I turn to the one true God when I'm going through stuff. For them to say, like, I've said to my, my children have come to me, Dad, Dad, what are you going to do with this situation? I'll say to them, I'm not sure yet. I've got to go talk to the Lord and pray to Him. Because if I make a decision, I'll probably make a wrong one. So I'm going to do my best to go seek and talk to Him and then honor Him. I'll let you know. I don't have all the answers. But I know if I go to the Lord, He will give me some guidance. Not always perfect, but give me guidance. I'd say I won't do it perfect, but he will guide me into doing it the best way that I can. I said to my children a lot, you know, when, when, when my children, would be, when Alan hit 15, I remember saying to them, this is my first time to have a 15-year-old, dude. i got to learn it with you. I, I don't know how to do it either, but I know there's a God who can guide us and lead us through it. And I would, I would honestly listen to the Lord about the best way to handle it. And my job as a parent, it's really big, I'm going to say something here, I want you to get really clear, okay? My job as a parent is to teach them, and look, teach them, and then let them go find their way in the Lord, too. Very important you see this thing. Teach them, not control them. We live in a society, we live in an area right here, where parents love control. They don't control where you live, where you work. <coughs> What you do on Sunday afternoon, where, where everybody gathers, there's a lot of control. I see it, I'm around that. I want you to know that's a big one I've tried to break with my children because I, I want y'all to get this real clear. If my father would have been allowed to control my life, okay, I would still live in Six Mile, South Carolina right now. There would never have been a winning at home because I would be working where he told me he wanted me to work. My father has dementia. He'll be with me in the next service at work. He is still yesterday. Yesterday, my father, with dementia, at 88, looked at me as we were riding in the car together and said, Danny, I've got an idea. I told you, I'll buy you a trailer. I want you to come and live right beside me. <laughs> and he said this. We pick up a trailer. What, 200 bucks? That's what he said. <laughs> I'm like, can I get one with walls? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he still, at 88, wants to control me today. And I broke that. And there's a winning at home today because I did not follow what my dad tried to tell me I had to do. And he still doesn't like it. He will tell me again today after I preach a reach point, he will say to me, because he says to me, can you just not find a church that will let you stay there? Do you have to travel along and preach at different churches? Can, is there no senior pastor that will want you? And I'll just go, yeah, dad, so far, just striking out. I tried to get in that church, but I struck out. It's just him. And I have to be okay with that. That's just who he is. And I'm not doing that to my children. I'm not doing it. My son lives in Camden, New Jersey, my second one. He is in, he lives in the hood. He lives on a street that many of you would not even want to. He won't even allow me to walk out at night. And he loves it. Dad, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Knocking it out of the park for the Lord right there. Go, son. Go. You, your job is to Teach them some. God gave this passage to the Israelites. Some of the Israelites followed it. Some did not. Let me just say to you today, it is not on you if your children choose to follow or choose not to follow. That's not your decision. You feel like it is. You feel like all the pressure. Well, if my children talk to me. You teach and then you let go and they are responsible to make the decision if they follow the Lord. It's not on you. I'm taking it off you today. I have four children. I don't get to decide if they follow Christ. I get to teach them and pray for them and let them go. You're looking at a man who could not have said that ten years ago. I have learned this from life experience. And I am more peaceful today, crazy to make this statement, as a parent than I've ever been because I've took the pressure off. Teach your children what the Lord God wants them to know. Put them in environments where they know the Lord. And then trust Him with the result. Because it's between them and Him. And number two, teach them, number one. And number two, be a fearless follower and an example of what it means to love the Lord.
yourself. You. First thing, teach them. Secondly, go follow him. All in. All in. Because your children are going to watch you. I sent a text to my children just after the holidays, just as we went into the new year. The Lord has laid on my heart to open a new wedding home counseling center for the underprivileged of our community, those who can get counsel and family. I'm right now trying to secure the place and do all that stuff. It's a big labor of love that the Lord's put on my heart. i got to do it. got to do it. i called to do it. And I sent that out to my children and said, hey, guys, your dad's older, but I've got this new calling the Lord's put on my life. I'm going to open a wedding at home. Uh, for the under poor, the poor underprivileged people can't get afford it, afford it, but we're, we're putting it right in the downtown, wherever we can get it, where they can walk to it, etc. Response back to my kids, way to go, Dad. So proud, Dad. Way to make a difference, Dad. And I'm sitting there going, wow, good, my kids, my 20-year-olds are affirming back, way to go, Pop. That's the best thing I can do. I, I didn't ask them to go do it with me. I'm going to go do this, kids. I'm hoping y'all are looking at my example and someday you do something for them. And you know what? That's between them and him. I just got to do what I'm called to do. And when I get to 80, I'm 57, so it, you know, yours, you guys in your 30s, it'll take you a little longer. I'm kind of, I'm there. <laughs> 80? So if I leave them an example of love of the Lord and tell them about the Lord, I'm good to go. Because what that meant was I was faithful when it was my turn. They get to decide what they do. My dream is that they all do it. But that's not my call. And so today, I've come down here to start this series on parenting by saying to you, you live for Jesus and then take the pressure off yourself because you ain't perfect and you ain't going to do it perfect and you ain't going to know how to handle it when somebody's locked in your trunk and your car. <laughs> you're going to wake up and you're going to lose it. You're going to say things. You go, Jesus, forgive me for those last four words. And you're just going to happen. It's just going to happen for his life. And so I'm challenging you to submit to the Lord. Allow him to continue to use you. I'm going to go keep preaching the word. My, my prayer for you is that you will continue to teach the word of the Lord in your life. And you will pray your children to come to know the Lord as well. Pastor Aaron is coming to join me. I'm going to ask him to close in prayer. Thank you for allowing me to come and share. <laughs> Well, we're real thankful to have Dan with us today. You know, we all need support. In any phase and stage of life that you're going through, um, if you're a parent, I just encourage you, take the, the gift that we're giving you today, the book by Dan, read that, lean in, learn what the Lord has to say to you about your parenting. Um, we all need help. We all need support. My wife and I have been really blessed by Winning at Home, the uh, counseling agency that, that Dan started. And a couple years ago, that's what got us through some stuff that we couldn't get through alone. Right? We needed counseling. We've been married for 10 years. We've been trying hard. Uh, we loved each other deeply, but we couldn't do it alone anymore. And that's what the church is here for. Counselors, too. But we're here to support one another, to love one another. So if you can join us this week and next and just work on your parenting. Maybe you're not a parent. You're working on how you view God, how God views you as his child. We'd love to continue the journey with you. Um, after this week and next, we're starting another series called Starting Over. And we're asking the question, hey, what does it look like to live beyond my regrets? We all have regrets. Things we did, things we didn't do, things that were done to us. And we're going to continue to ask the questions, what does the Lord's word, what does the Bible, what does our faith say about these things in my past? So we hope you can keep journeying with us. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week. Let me pray for us. And then there's some cookies in the back. There's some kids in the back that you need to get. <laughs> so Jesus, we're thankful. We're thankful for uh, faith family. We're thankful that you gave us a guideline for the lives that we live in your word, that you give us support through your Holy Spirit, speaking loudly in our lives through one another as we support each other through whatever we're going through. As my friends go back to their lives today, I just pray that your truth would filter in to everything they tell themselves, to everything the world is telling them around them, and that your grace would even make the picture even fuller, that they are loved, that they can love those around them, no matter how
broken life might feel here and there. So we love you. I love my friends. Bless us all as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day.